Perfect. Perfect. All right, so today we are going to be DIYing some turn signals. Some of the few things we need are the connectors. If you have an electrical kit, um, get you one of those. Uh, but these connectors are definitely going to help you out a lot, keep everything clean. Uh, and you can see this kit has uh, just a bare minimum. That's all you really need. Next thing we'll need, uh, we'll need the lights, obviously. I got these off of Amazon, link down below. Um, I did have to extend them so they could reach the mounting points that I wanted on the rear of the bike. Uh, so you had to slice those in. And it, those are pretty simple to do. Next you'll need is a switch, also from Amazon. I got these in a two pack. Uh, you'll see there's three wires here. You have your ground, the brown, consider it a red, the blue, consider it a red. Next thing I'm uh, connecting this to an external battery so I'm using a DC connector I splice the red wire so that I can have two connections and then um, I've got the ground wire also about the same length um, I didn't measure it and I got a little bit more wire than I needed but with a little bit of creativity you can clean it up not a big deal next thing we'll need um, well, first of all, here's a wire that I used. Uh, this is 12 gauge. It's about $18 for that spool. That's a lot of wire. Um, you don't need it. You don't need that much. I've also got these male ends or female ends of the DC connectors. Um, if you want to use that, you could just cut off the tips and use that. I think it's about 8 inches. And here's a schematic that I used. B for black, R for red, um, showing you what connects to what on the power cord, the switch, and the two lights. Now for whatever reason, using pluses and minuses for positive and negative were uh, confusing to me, so I had to use black and red just to uh, make it dummy proof. All right, um, now that we got everything set up, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start assembling everything. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go with the power cord and connect the two reds to the reds on the lights. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to temporarily connect them using the um, wire caps or whatever they're called. Uh, that way we could test it out at the end, make sure all connections are good. Uh, supply power and hopefully everything lights up. These are the caps that I was using. I actually went ahead and used the orange ones because the 12 gauge wire is pretty thick. Um, you'll see this in the you'll see it coming up that I switched over to the orange caps. Here are the orange caps. These will um, hold the wires together temporarily just so we could test everything out. So I made one connection to the light. Now it doesn't matter whether it's left or right uh, right now because you can always just um, flip them when you mount them. So no big deal. Left, right, doesn't matter. Um, twisting the reds together from the light to the power cord. All right, referring back to the schematic, uh, the black, sorry I didn't put it in screen, but the black wires off the lights will be connecting to the switch. And now as you can see, I'm using the blue wire off the switch, which like I said earlier, we're gonna consider it red. And the brown wire off the switch we're also going to consider it red. Now these are going to connect to the two black wires on the lights. All right. So as of right now, we've got red from power to red to light, and then black from light to the colored wires on the switch. So now that we got all that connected, uh, as you can tell, we have the black wire from the power cord and the black wire 
from the switch. We're going to make a connection there and we should be all done and ready to test out. All right, so now that we got all the connections made, we're going to pull out our battery pack and supply some power and see how that works out. Just for reference, here's the um, schematic again, black to black, red to red. Just follow this. It's pretty simple, guys. Should be able to do it. It took me about 15 minutes to wire this whole thing up. Um, but recording and everything took a little bit longer. Uh, I actually had to redo it just so I can make the light cables a little bit longer. But without recording, it took me about 15 minutes. Here's a battery pack. I'm using this temporarily for the headlight, which I'm going to switch over to um, hardwire. Anyway, I'm going to plug in our power cord, turn on battery pack. And as you can tell on the switch, we're in the zero position. And as we turn it on, boom, we have one side lit up. And now we try the other side. Now the beauty of this mod is that you don't need a relay or resistors. Uh, they're already built in into the lights. So you really just have to buy the lights, some extra wire, and the switch. Um, if you don't already have a battery pack, obviously you'll need a battery pack and the DC cord as well. Um, but this is a very, very simple, simple project to do. So now that we've got confirmation that everything works the way it's wired up, we're going to loosen up all these uh, wire bolts or wire nuts, whatever these things are called. And then we're going to make uh, solid connections using the... Uh, solder sleeves I guess they're called um, and then we're going to clean it up with some electrical tape um, that way we know that water won't affect it all right so now that we got everything um, disconnected from the wire nuts we will make the connections now I'm going to just uh, speed through this after showing you the first sleeve because once you do it to one you basically do the same thing to the other. These are the connections I was talking about. Um, those are very simple to use. I would recommend getting a heat gun because using a lighter, it works, but a heat gun will probably be safer and um, you won't have to worry about burning anything or uh, burning your fingers or anything like that. But uh, fortunately for me, I did not have any accidents. I do have a heat gun, but I was just too lazy to go dig it out of the basement. Um, but yeah, definitely get yourself a heat gun if you're going to do some of these type of electrical projects using these connectors. So as you can see here, what I'm doing, I am sliding the sleeve through when I'm having a difficult time doing it. I'm sliding the sleeve through all the way. And then see that silver piece that's in the middle there? That's the solder. So now that I've got one side of the wire in there, I'm going to feed the other side of the wire in to make the connection. Now what's going to happen is when you melt it together, that solder is going to uh, melt into the wires and that tubing will also melt. And it's amazing that I did not burn myself. But now, I don't leave it in one spot. Um, I move it around, keep the heat uh, from really concentrating on one area. I do try to keep it longer on the edges just so it can get some type of seal. Um, it's not going to be totally waterproof, but it's going to shrink around hopefully just enough. Uh, we're going to back it up with some electrical tape and as, as you can see I put the flame on the solder as well make sure that melts into the wires. Now we're going to give that a couple of seconds to cool down and while that cools down we're going to grab our electrical tape and we're just going to grab a piece and just um, 
basically wrap it around both ends of the cable. Now I would like to start at the cable and end at the opposite cable. That way it'll hold uh, the connection together as well. So there's a little bit more reinforcement. And there you go. It's not the prettiest, um, but it works, right? Now I wouldn't worry too much about how it looks right now. Um, a little bit of cab cable management will help clean everything up, okay? Right now we're just really concerned about making the connections, keeping the connection secure, and hopefully uh, keep them a little bit waterproof, if not water resistant. You guys get the idea on how to use these uh, cable sleeves and how to make the connections. So we're gonna go ahead and fast forward. Alright, and we are at the last connection, just uh, wrapping it up, finishing uh, finishing it off. Uh, before we mount it to the bike, we're going to go ahead and grab the battery pack and make sure all the connections are made and everything works fine. Alright, so now we've got the DC connector hooked into the battery. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Take the switch and test them out. There you go. Everything's working. And the great thing about these uh, indicators is the sequential pattern, uh, not just a regular blinking light, but it gives it a little uh, pizzazz. Everything's good. Guys, if you want some e-travel roll stickers, let me know, hit me up in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know, hit me up in the comments. And I will check you guys out later. Peace. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.